Hello and welcome to Dear Doctor, the medical YouTube channel where we discuss the latest and most trending topics in health and medicine and today we're going to talk about the HV.1 and JN.1 variants of COVID-19. What are they, how do they differ from the original virus, and what are the implications for vaccination and public health measures? Let's find out. COVID-19 is caused by a virus called SARS-CoV-2, which belongs to a family of viruses called coronaviruses. Coronaviruses are constantly changing and evolving through a process called mutation, which means that they can acquire new characteristics and behaviors over time. Some of these mutations are harmless, but some can make the virus more infectious, more deadly, or more resistant to vaccines and treatments. The HV.1 and JN.1 variants are two examples of mutated versions of SARS-CoV-2 that have emerged recently and have raised concerns among scientists and health authorities. The HV.1 variant was first detected in Haiti in July 2023, and the JN.1 variant was first detected in Japan in August 2023. Both variants have been classified as variants of interest by the World Health Organization, which means that they have genetic changes that may affect the virus's properties, such as transmissibility, severity, or immune escape. The HV.1 variant has several mutations in the spike protein, which is the part of the virus that attaches to human cells and allows the virus to enter and infect them. One of these mutations, called N501Y, is also found in other variants of concern, such as the alpha, beta, and gamma variants, and is associated with increased transmissibility and reduced antibody response. Another mutation, called E484K, is also found in the beta and gamma variants, and is linked to reduced vaccine efficacy and increased risk of reinfection. The HV.1 variant also has a mutation called P681H, which is also found in the Delta variant, and is suspected to enhance the virus's ability to infect cells and spread faster. The JN.1 variant has a different set of mutations in the spike protein, which are not shared by any other known variants. One of these mutations, called Y144T, is located in a region called the receptor binding domain, which is the part of the spike protein that directly interacts with the human cell receptor called ACE2. This mutation may alter the shape and function of the spike protein, and potentially affect its affinity and specificity for the ACE2 receptor. Another mutation, called L452R, is also located in the receptor binding domain, and is known to increase the virus's transmissibility and resistance to neutralizing antibodies. The JN.1 variant also has a mutation called D614G, which is found in almost all variants of SARS-CoV-2, and is believed to increase the virus's stability and infectivity. The HV.1 and JN.1 variants are both worrisome because they may pose a threat to the global efforts to control the pandemic and end the crisis. According to the latest data from the Global Initiative on Sharing All Influenza Data, GISED, the HV.1 variant has been detected in 12 countries, and the JN.1 variant has been detected in 9 countries, as of November 8, 2023. These variants may have the potential to spread faster, cause more severe disease, and evade the protection offered by the current vaccines and treatments. Therefore, it is crucial to monitor their evolution and distribution, and to evaluate their impact on the effectiveness and safety of the existing and future interventions. The good news is that there is still hope to prevent and combat these variants, and to protect ourselves and others from the devastating consequences of COVID-19. The best way to do that is to follow the public health guidelines and recommendations, such as wearing a mask, practicing social distancing, washing your hands, and avoiding crowded and poorly ventilated spaces. Moreover, it is essential to get vaccinated as soon as possible, and to complete the full course of vaccination, as this is the most effective way to reduce the risk of infection, hospitalization, and death, and to prevent the emergence and spread of new variants. 
The current vaccines are still highly effective against most variants of SARS-CoV-2 and can be adapted and updated to address the new variants if needed. Finally, it is important to stay informed and updated about the latest developments and discoveries regarding COVID-19 and its variants, and to rely on credible and trustworthy sources of information, such as the World Health Organization, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the National Health Service. That's all for today's episode of Dear Doctor. I hope you learned something new and interesting about the HV.1 and JN.1 variants of COVID-19. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Also, feel free to leave a comment below and let us know what you think about these variants, and what other topics you would like us to cover in the future. Thank you for watching and stay safe and healthy. See you next time.